Hey guys, you're looking at a uh, a new, what I call the Magic Dungeon, and it's a bunch of components that uh, I created that you can put together in any way that you want. You can make this 50 times larger or 50 times smaller if you want to, um, but you're looking at it without any lighting applied. This is just regular, um, this is uh, version 9 of Foundry. There's been no lighting. We're just looking at um, the dungeon without it, but let me show you what happens when we go into a version that has the new foundry lighting system how crazy is this i mean look and i'm going to do a tutorial today on an effect and i'm going to give you guys a free file to download so if you want to just jump to that go ahead but i thought i would just spend a second showing you what uh foundry has done with the version 9 lighting system it is so crazy what's available to us now uh in terms of you know you have all the the animation types that you had before. You may even have a couple extra, I'm not, you know, I'm not even sure. But then you have this advanced options and you have this thing called adaptive luminance. And if I wanted to look at like legacy, I mean, I can't even view it because you just, you can't, uh, it's not, not really helpful, uh, the, the legacy stuff, but you have these concepts called gradual illumination. You can't really see it here, um, but between adaptive luminance and gradual illumination, it's total game changers for your ability to be able to light your scenes. Nothing you're seeing on here is done with a uh, with a module. Like all of this this fire effect, this is all just stock Foundry version nine lighting, and you can even do things like this. Uh, you can see all of a sudden I've made all of my darker areas kind of glow with sort of a fiery magic. So I'll, I'll walk you in a future tutorial about how I built this map and things that I designed into it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to actually zoom in. I mean, look at this, this, uh, this rainbow effect, this is just stock foundry lighting. Um, but we're going to zoom in today on this. I made a, uh, a magic circle and I did it with stock foundry lighting. And so I'm going to show you guys how I did this. And then I'm actually going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you this scene with all of the lighting that I kind of pre configured. So all of this, these lights that you see here, these are uh, pre configured. I wanted something for my scenes. If you guys haven't used like, uh, uh, the JB two a, um, animation. Those guys have the coolest fire animation and other types of animation. And I highly recommend those, but they're Patreon. So I can't really deploy them in my maps without breaking everybody's maps. So I said, well, I wonder if there's a stock way within foundry to create some fire effects that could be scaled and added in different situations. And you're looking at some of those effects that I've, uh, come up with. And so I plan on using these in my, just in my um, deployments in the magic dungeon and other places, but I'll show you how these work and I've created them as prefabs so that you can just kind of cut and paste them into scenes that you want. And then uh, I, I did this because the, you know, the, the lighting really takes a lot of, um, you have so many variables to play with. It, it takes a lot of tweaking things and luminosity and, and uh, background saturation, things like that. And so rather than trying to show you each one of these individually, I thought I'd just give you the scene so that you can uh, open them up and see how they're designed and then you know tweak them from there. Um, when I give you this scene, you won't have the background tile. Uh, I'll just I'll just give you the scene with the, the stock um, lighting. Of course, you have to be on version nine to be able to use it. Um, but uh, just put a background behind it and you'll see these things show up. If it's on a, a transparent background, they won't, uh, they won't really show up the way that you're seeing them here. So you can see this is how it looks with more of a transparent background. So with that, let's, uh, let's jump into the tutorial. I'll show you guys a little bit about how I built these and how you can tweak them from here. And then, uh, and then it's all yours. Okay. So first up, I did turn all of these into prefabs. I did that so that I could save them to my actors tab and I can use them whenever I want to. Uh, what that means though, is that if you want to manipulate them and you come into this scene, I have actually already set these up to be, um, 
a little bit editable. You can turn them off without turning on quick edit mode, but you'll want uh, token attachers quick edit mode. If you don't know what that is, I'm not going to go into token, token attacher tutorial today, but there's a macro available with it. There's another way to get into quick edit mode. You can watch my tutorial on token attacher if you're curious how to do it. Once you have quick edit mode open, uh, then you can manipulate all of these. And let me show you, there's kind of two major components and the big innovation for magic circles is this is this inner circle here. So if I click it open, you can see I've actually given it a tint. That's because I'm deploying all of these in a in a uh, fire uh, dungeon. And I, I gave them all a specific light color because I can change that dungeon to like a necromancer's dungeon and, and give it a green motif or I can, and this is just with one, one macro and I'll show you guys how I use this today, uh, but I can change these lights to uh, a blue or a purple or some other color. Uh, and so I did give this a little inner tint of red. You may not want to do that and you may want to just give it uh, nothing. And, uh, and that'll look differently in a room that's not tinted uh, red the way that this one's, that the way this one's tinted. So what I care about is, of course, whether I'm tinting it or not. And then let me just save that. And then um, I, the inner circle doesn't need to have any animation whatsoever. So these don't really matter in here. And then in the advanced tab, I'm not going to want to constrain my, my magic circle by wall. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, I... Uh, not going to have it provide vision, although maybe there's uh, situations where you want that. It, this doesn't really matter uh, for the inner circle, whatever you pick, legacy coloration or adaptive or anything else. I don't think it really matters. What matters the most for the inner circle is the luminosity. You can see my luminosity is at negative 0.05. That's the smallest amount after zero. So if it's at zero, you can see I don't get the effect that I want. I actually want it just slightly below zero at negative 0.05. And then the rest of these don't matter as well. Uh, you can play around with these. I think these actually will change a little bit of the effect, but for the most part, it's just this negative luminosity that you're looking for. Then you get to the circle itself. I'm going to give all of these circles the same color because I want to be able to change these with a macro later. Um, this one is the energy field. I've got it set at maximum animation speed and it's meant its animation intensity down quite a bit further. You can see I can change this and depending on if you're seeing my frame rates pick up on the YouTube video, you'll, you'll be able to see how much it changes, but you can really change how these things work and look. Um, notice here, not constrained by walls. It's not providing vision. I'm using adaptive luminance in this case. I have a very high luminosity set up because I want it to be bright. Um, and then I've played around with like background saturation. See if I, if I decrease the saturation, it gets rid of the color, which I want to keep. Um, background contrast matters with certain effects. This one, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And then background shadows, you may, you may like this effect as you increase the shadows. I've kind of got mine set to here. And when you stack those on top of each other, you get essentially this, uh, you know, this, this circle effect. So that's essentially how you do these things. And so again, I'm not going to go into detail on how I did all of these. Sometimes I did change the settings of the inner circle. Um, but just to show you some of the effects, this one is the vortex effect set at high speed, relatively low intensity. Um, you can see uh, I have it at relatively low luminosity. If I increase it, it just sort of washes it out. So I kind of like this, you know, kind of 0.2, you can go in like 0.05 increments. Um, and then you can play around with the rest of these, but I really, as a fire effect, this is probably my favorite one. And again, you can make these things bigger or smaller, right? I can take this basic configuration. I can change my, uh, my radius to something very large or something very small. And then I can do the same thing with the outer circle and I've got, uh, I've got a good one. This one is also the vortex just done in a different way. You can see it's sped up quite a bit. It looks like a bit more of a magic effect. Um, but you've got uh, chroma. Um, chroma is a little bit different. You can't actually give it uh, something's different about this one. Um, you have to do adaptive luminance. Uh, you do have to play around with the settings for uh, chroma to make it work properly. Um, you can also take some of these and you can add that you can double them up. So 
This, for example, is an effect. This is the bewitching wave effect. But if you uh, add multiple bewitching waves together, you can make it a brighter effect and it gives it more of that sort of wave in a brighter luminosity. So you can double these things up. Um, this one's kind of a cool one. It creates the sort of effect that sort of strobes out. This one's also pretty cool. This is the uh, swirling fog set at high speed, high intensity. And you can see it creates a really good sort of ghostly effect. This look great in like a green uh, set in a, in a room that had a mist around it, things like that. Here you've got the sunburst. You could slow this down or speed this up to create a good effect. Um, you've got some other kind of interesting things, I think, situationally. Uh, this is light dome. Again, you can play with all of these settings to make them quite a bit different than they are. You can see this one is the uh, this kind of hexagonal pa uh, pattern that's uh, that's going through there. I like this one. This is the um, this is the ra uh, radial rainbow. Just radi uh, radiates out more of a chroma effect, which looks good as a halo. This one similar. You can see it kind of swirls. This is called the swirling rainbow appropriately named and uh and yeah so just grab these things and play with them uh, the way that you want to and see how it works um, in your particular world but let's grab one of these now let's grab this one so I like this one I'll copy it I'm copying the um, the token attacher prefab and then I'll just come in here and I'll paste it and I can put it really anywhere I want. And I've got this like cool now fire effect and I can use this. I can save it as a prefab. So if I came in here and created a new actor, I could call this uh, fire, uh, call it file fire circle one, I'll call it an NPC character. And then I go into the prototype token and I click I just make sure that I've got active, um, actively click the, the control token for it. And I just say assign token. And what that lets me do then is I can grab it and I can pull it out anytime. And I've got a fire effect. And maybe this is a portal that I want to activate or something else. You can add other things to that uh, prefab as well. But you can see in here, I, I created a, one of those magic circle prefabs and I dropped it right here. I think what I'll put here is uh, maybe some kind of treasure or uh, maybe there's some kind of boss that's in stasis or something like that. I did want to show you one thing, one more thing, and that's how to change lights. Uh, I'll just include this macro uh, for free for anybody who wants it. Um, Ripper actually helped me create this macro. It's super simple. Um, but if I go into edit mode, I'll show you what it looks like. And uh, what it says is any lights that I have controlled on this scene, change that light to this, this color. And I actually have some pre-built colors in here and I'll show you why that's super helpful. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this macro so that it turns everything green. And, uh, what I'm going to do here is go to my lights. I'm going to select all, go to this one, select all I'm using, um, the select everywhere, uh, module for this, and then I'm going to execute this macro. And you can see it changes everything to this kind of green green tint. Now I have more changes I, I want to make if I really want to make this the right motif. So I'm going to go into my background image. This is just part of my magic dungeon set. These are all the different pieces that kind of make this thing work. And I'm going to turn it into a green background. And because of how everything is set up, the, these are all like sort of transparent tiles. So everything sees through to the green background. So it really finishes the effect of changing, you know, a whole scene to a new motif. So, uh, and, and then there's even like some clever things like I'm using, um, uh, well, what's the module called? Um, I'll put the, the name in the description, but it lets you change on the fly. Uh, to different types of tiles. So here I have different uh, themed tiles for this particular light. And I want to change my light to a green light, for example, to match the rest of the motif. So there's really cool stuff that you can do with that too. But the Foundry lighting system really makes this stuff 
it like it really lights it up no pun intended or pun intended and so hopefully you guys have fun um, playing with this um, but hopefully that was helpful to you guys this is a quick and easy way to make uh, new effects and hopefully you enjoy just looking at what you can do with the new foundry lighting system it really is a game changer it's extremely performant um, you you can see all the the lights that i've added here um, one thing i should also mention with the new foundry is uh, notice in the walls you have this thing called light restriction which is new and you have you know none limited and normal this is really a big game changer because you can now constrain lights and not anything else so this um fire effect around you know this um this this little channel of lava it's contained right so if i move this out of the way you can see my lighting bleeds out and it conflicts maybe with other lighting that i've got with the scene but because of this new wall i can keep them uh contained so my movement restrictions none my light restrictions uh, normal normal but then sight and sound are both unrestricted so my players can see right over the top of that they don't have any uh, issues with not seeing the light or anything like that but when you put it all together you now have unlimited control over how your lights are casting across a particular space. So I, I just think this is cool. The ability to take something as simple as, I mean, this is just a, this is just a little tile. Um, and to, to take something as simple as that and all of a sudden make it glow with this sort of uh, hot, um, you know, effect is really great. I mean, look at this, this is just a normal platform. But when you add this, just this one piece of lighting, you know, this is a swirling fog lighting. Um, it's how I set up the settings of it, give it this, this sort of like negative feel. Um, but this is amazing for out of the box stock foundry to be able to do stuff like this is, uh, is something that I think as map makers, we're, we've been really excited about. Um, I don't think I was really even expecting this to be this good. Um, to be able to, you know, ability to be able to, you know, combine multiple um, lights and stuff. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this new lighting system now to really design spaces the way that you want to. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. And uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I'll uh, have these uh, this file for the um, circle effects. Uh, linked in the uh, video description so you can grab it there and uh, yeah by all means come up with some other ones that I haven't even thought of yet and share them with the rest of the community and uh, otherwise in the meantime have fun making your maps